So basically the idea is I can create a clone of myself. So the public agent represents my customer clients or friends. Let's ask what is my personal email address. And look at that. It says I'm not able to share my personal email address. I can share my public email address, which is support at the rednotogether.com. I created a family agent. It can use both the public and private level information. If I ask the same question, what is my personal email address? So the family agent is able to output my personal email address. Now we can create use case such as make a digital clone of yourself and then let your friends, family, your customer or client chat with you when you are asleep or maybe doing some more important work all without any fear of your personal data breach. And that's what we are going to explore in this video. Hi, my name is Avijit. You are watching Know Together where I try to simplify latest tech and innovations for your future and your business. Let's get started. Welcome back. This is the second part of the two series video where I am trying to create a clone of myself using Autogen's Teachable Agent. If you have straight away landed into this video, please use the link on your right top to see the first part of the video where I have explored the Teachable Agent in great detail even we did a code based deep dive. However, if you are already aware of the Teachable Agent and how it works, please continue to watch this video. So in this video, we are quickly going to go through the architecture or the use case in a more visual format and then we'll straight away go ahead into my VS Code Studio and customize the Teachable Agent capability and make the clone of myself. So without much further ado, let's dive in. So here the idea is to create a clone of myself using Autogen's Teachable Agent. Now if I think through of my day-to-day -day use cases, there could be really four type of users who could do chat or conversation with this AI agent when I'll be probably sleeping or will be doing some other work. The first person who will communicate with this agent would be myself. And definitely I will be conversing with this clone to teach it the stuff that I know and maybe my business information, get information which I may have forgot. So this will also be like a journal for me. The second type of person who can chat with this clone would be probably my family members. The third type could be my friends. They could also even ask for general advice, maybe ask to do some specific task. And the final one could be my customer clients, team members who would be doing more of business communications with this clone. So if you look at this use case very closely, this clone will have information which is private, very much sensitive. It will also have information which are more business oriented. It is far more important that when it do communicate with different type of users, it keeps in mind the different sensitivity level of the data that it should use in its communication so that it doesn't disclose, let's say some extremely sensitive personal information to my client or team member or customer or my friends. At the same time, when the family member is having communication with the clone, it should not unnecessarily pick up information that are meant for my business. So we really need to find out a way how we can achieve that. For the purpose of the demo, I will keep it simple. I'll only implement public sensitivity level and private sensitivity level of the data while it is storing the relevant information into the vector database. So the private information should be only be accessible by my family member and myself in the communication, whereas my friends or the customer or client or team member should be only able to access the public information. I hope this is all making sense to you. So now we'll go into the, our VS code and we will customize the teachable agent and make a digital clone of myself. So now I'm back into my IDE. In the part one of the video, we have explored in detail about this teachability module within Autogen. And we have also explored in the teachability module that there are a couple of functions that are really, really interesting and that are really essential for any AI agent to become teachable. Just to help you remember that we have discussed there are two methods which are considered memo retrieval and consider memo storage are very important in creating the teachability within the AI agent. The considered memo storage is a function to decide which information to store in the vector database and considered memo retrieval is the function which helps the agent to decide which information it needs to pull out from the vector database in its own memory context to respond during any chat. So in our use case where we will customize this teachability module, we really don't need to change much thing in the retrieval process, but we must change the consider memo storage function so that we can add sensitivity level into the data when it is storing inside the vector database. I have already created the code so that we can quickly go through the code step by step. So the first thing I have done is I have created a Python file called custom label teachability. First thing first, we have to import the teachability module that comes with the Autogen framework. We have also imported the conversable agent and text analyzer agent as it comes with the Autogen framework. 
now we are defining our new module called custom teachability and this is definitely a subclass of the teachability module the reason is because in this custom teachability module we are not going to rewrite or override all the functions that is part of the teachability module rather we'll only focus on updating the consider memo storage function so that is why all the other initialization steps remain same like the add to agent function remains same uh, but here i want to just point out to you one thing that i am using the out of the box text analyzer agent as part of the initiation but if you want to also customize the text analyzer agent you could do that and you can use that here and that is why I kept the add to agent method inside this custom teachability class. It's not needed otherwise because the code is same as it is part of the teachability module. Now what we have done, we have overridden the consider memo storage function in a very simple way to achieve our use case here. If you see the original consider memo storage from the teachability module, you can see what it is doing is, is first checking that the comment that the user have passed is was it a task or was it advice? And then with uh, multiple level of analysis, it is finally actually saving the task advice pair in its own database. And similarly, if it is not a task or advice, just some important information that needs to be saved into the memory. It's again, it does the analysis using the text analyzer agent and then it saves it as a question answer pair. Now, the first thought that I had that I would do is instead of saving just question and answer i would also add another attribute here which is called sensitivity level so it will save question answer and the sensitivity level then i realized that if i really need to do that way then i have to change the add input output method pair method which is inside the memo store class so that means in essence i also have to rewrite the memo store class and i can do that but that will make the code more complex and that is why i left that idea for this demo what i have done instead is as follows so basically i haven't changed anything into this consider memo storage analysis part as it comes with default rather in the end i have added another check using the text analyzer agent where i said that where is the comment and please take the comment and think through and tell me if this text contains any private or extremely personal information or not and then i said if it contains a private information then return private or otherwise you return public so basically sensitivity level variable will only have two values either private or public based on the information that is shared when the user is communicating with the agent now what i have done is instead of saving the advice directly i have created another variable advice to save and i added sensitivity level here then comma then the actual advice and similarly for the question answer pair i have added the answer to save and added the sensitivity level there then the actual answer and then when it is saving it is saving the question and in the answer to save it is also saving the sensitivity level that it is fetching out in the last step i hope this all makes sense to you so in essence whenever any information is going to save into the vector database it is going to have both the task advice pair or the question answer pair but now with the sensitivity level added into its information essentially that means when it will fetch the information using the considered memo storage function it will fetch the sensitivity level as well then i can write custom system message to filter out those information which have sensitivity level as private or public based on the use case now let's go to, to our first teachable agent code now there is nothing that needs to be changed here the only thing that we need to change here is we need to disable the default teachability instead we will enable the custom teachability that we have just defined and for that we have imported the custom teachability here and then instead of teachability dot add to agent what we are doing we are saying custom teachability dot add to agent now we will go ahead and test it so before we test it what we will do is we will delete the existing database so i will run python first teachable agent dot py and then i say hi my name is vijit now if you see the context that it has saved in its vector database is the question is what is my name and now it says the sensitivity level as public because it understands this this is not sensitive data because the text analyzer think that it's not sensitive data and then it saves the answer now let's add another information i'll say my personal email address is personal of gmail.com and now if you see now it has added the sensitivity level as private uh, because i have said it's my personal email address now i will add another public information where i'll say my business email address is support at the rate not together .com. so now if you see it has added the uh, business email address as public information in the database so the next thing that we will do is we'll create a public agent dot by this is more sort of the ai agent uh, that will be used by your customer clients or maybe your friends because they are only able to get my public information uh, not the private information so here all these import statements are exactly similar to what we have done in the first teachable agents there is nothing extra there really here i am just adding a system message if you compare it with the first teachable agent 
the teachable agent didn't had any system message so this was more sort of autogen provided default conversable agent but in this scenario we will use the default conversable agent but we will add our own system message or system context and in the system context i am saying that you are representing a widget remember all the question and conversations here will be related to a widget and here i have actually said answer users question a widget public level information from the context you must not leak any private level information so that means in a sense this agent should be reading the system context in each and every communication that it is doing with the public clients and it will only use the public level sensitivity information rest of all the configurations are same now for the test i'm just testing what is my personal email address and then i'm just initiating the chat and providing the uh, teachable agent that we have defined here with the system context public agent.py so here i am asking what is my personal email address this agent should not disclose my personal email address and as you can see that it has said i appreciate your interest in wanting to connect with me however it is not appropriate to ask my inform personal information such as email address please reach out to me using the public contact information which is support at the together.com thank you for understanding now if you go through the log what it has done exactly is it did the search here and it has found all the information from the vector database that is relevant and it has fetched the both my private and the public email address but because it saw the sensitivity level as private it didn't actually consider that in drafting its reply right so now if i ask him what is my business email address and if i rerun it again and there you go it has spelled out my business email address as support at the .com. now we what we will do we'll take a quick look at the family agent.python file that i have created so this family agent.py is basically representing me or my family so everything else remains same as the public agent the only thing that i had to change was the system message what i've done in the system message is i have said you answer users question with both your which is public and private level information so i have not restricted it on using any of the information so now if i ask it what is my personal email address so if i run my family agent and as you can see it has responded that that my personal email address is personal .com and the sensitivity level is private so this is how we can actually categorize the sensitivity level in within the data with in the vector database but yeah by all means this is not a productionized configuration in fact actually i wouldn't even recommend you to use this format when you are storing data into the vector database you should not actually store the sensitivity level as a data object you can but rather it should be part of your metadata so that is a whole new concept of how to level uh, data when storing into the vector database i will definitely bring a video about custom leveling of your data within vector database but this is more sort of um, easy to win example to show you how you can customize a teachable agent to your use cases now that you have seen how to create your own custom teachability module please let me know how you are going to use it in your business use case there are plenty of business use cases that you can build with the custom teachable agent you can build a customer support system with different level of you know sensitivity level the same vector database can be used by your customer querying their order status or something whereas your technician should be able to get more in more data from your ticketing system or, or or maybe operational guide and get data regarding how to solve a ticket that should not be available to your customers similarly you can also customize the teachable agent to create use case in probably healthcare sector where you can teach an ai agent with different capability to you know serve different type of users like you know a patient or a nurse or a doctor and they may have different level of sensitivity level in the data that the agent should be able to use when replying to each and every different users please let me know in the comments how you are going to use this customized teachable module and i generally bring more such cool projects so stay tuned subscribe to the channel Take care and I will see you in the next one. Bye.